A man clings to life, and his son is left wondering if this is it. The doctors come in, and they told me, be prepared. This isn't good. We don't know if we can save him. Until he receives a message from God. I'm like, this has to be real. This has to be God. Plus, he's a sharpshooting MVP who relies on his teammates in more ways than one. For us and on the court, you know, we all grind and compete on the floor, so why not grind and compete in our spiritual you know, walk together as well? On today's 700 Club Interactive. Hi, good morning and welcome to the show. Last week, the Pope raised some eyebrows with his comments regarding atheism. He said many Christians are hypocrites and went on to say, quote, so many Christians are like this and these people scandalize others. And then he continued, but to be a Catholic like that, it's better to be an atheist. It is that scandal. He went on to say, the Lord has redeemed all of us, all of us with the blood of Christ, all of us, not just Catholics. Everyone. He said, Father, the atheists, even the atheists, everyone. The Vatican released a statement clarifying the Pope was only saying that God's grace is free to all, even atheists. The Pope mixing it up, Terry, getting a lot of um, people talking about those comments. Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad that they qualified what he was saying afterwards because that, that whole universalism concept that everybody is you know, just gets a free pass. <laughs> it made me think though, you know, we as, as Christ followers, you know, we can read uh, how Jesus was critical of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the holy ones, right? Mm -hmm. And we can maybe root him on and yes. thank you for, you know, he pointed out the hypocrisy. Yet here's the Pope calling on Christians and saying, what are the lives we're leading? How are we leading people astray? You know, Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, I believe it was, said, you know, we are Christ's ambassadors, like God is making his appeal through us. And how do we represent him? Jesus says, you are salt and light. And are we living that way? Well, and it's so easy for the tendency to be, I'm living my life for the things that are all about me, you know, but really that's the surrender part of it, you know. We die, we get called to a different way of living, and we need to look different when we're living that way. And in the, in the Pope's defense regarding, you know, is it better to be an atheist, you know, the Bible's clear in Revelation that we are not to live lukewarm lives, mm -hmm. you know? How God told the church, I'd rather you either be hot or cold. You're lukewarm, and that's a problem to God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, was it Gandhi who said, you know, I would have become a Christian if I hadn't yeah. met one or seen the seen behavior, the way yeah, act, seen the yeah. way Christians act, or yeah, we, we need to be good ambassadors. Be aware of our walk. Yeah. Amen. Well, Frankie Capers is a cashier at a bagel shop on the campus of Georgetown University. Both her parents were ill and Frankie fell into debt caring for them. Recently, both her parents passed away and this 57-year-old battled depression but credits her strong faith for keeping on. Students at Georgetown recognized her positive attitude and just last week, a group called Unsung Heroes started a GoFundMe page in Frankie's name. The site raised enough money for a vacation to Disney World for Frankie and her grandson. She responded, as long as God gives me the strength to, I keep going, even though my body's tired, my feet hurt, but I'm still good with it. Because everything I do, I try to do it in faith in Jesus' name. And, and Terry, we were just talking about being Christ's ambassador. Exactly. Here's a woman who contemplated suicide at one point because she didn't mm -hmm. think she could she could do this any longer, yeah. yet she so impressed people with her love for people, her yeah. warmth, her kindness, her compassion. People recognized it and wanted to bless her. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I think she is exactly what we're talking mm -hmm. about. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not because I've got it together or know how to do it, but because I've surrendered And to people him found it an honor and a privilege and a joy to bless yes. her as a result. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful story. Well, Netflix is set to release a drama entitled the Discovery. The show's premise is that of a doctor, played by Robert Redford, who has scientifically proven the existence of an afterlife. As a result, mass suicide in, ensues from people who are anxious to get to heaven. The show is expected to be a hit and begs the question, what could science prove that hasn't already been addressed in scripture? And what does the Bible say about the value of living life here and now in light of eternity? Good question, Terry. You know, what, what more do we need? The premise of this film uh, is a new idea that people, oh, now I believe and I want to go to eternity. But yeah. the Bible makes it so clear in Jesus' authority over nature. 
yeah. uh, over demons, mm -hmm. over sickness, right? Yeah. And when he was teaching in the synagogues, people saw his authority. The Bible's clear about Jesus' authority in the afterlife already. Well, it's also clear about free will. You know that God invites us. He doesn't require it of us. He invites us and we get to choose. And that choice is pretty much made by how we live our lives, how we treat others. And so, you know, how like Hollywood to present a film where heaven's wonderful and people are committing suicide to want to go there. Likely to be a very big yeah. hit indeed. Well, we are roughly six weeks from the start of the NBA playoffs. Despite the loss of Kevin Durant, the Golden State Warriors are the league's best team. And they hope to regain the championship after losing in seven games last year versus Cleveland. The Warriors are led by two-time MVP Steph Curry, who may be the greatest shooter in NBA history. Recently, Curry spoke with our Tom Buring about how he handles the pressure both on and off the court. You can't get lost in the daily routines and, and the hype of what we do on the floor um, and forget you know, why we're here. Steph Curry is basketball's distinguished sharpshooter, an NBA champion and back-to-back -back MVP after becoming the league's first unanimous selection to win the award. His growing acclaim raises expectations. But it definitely becomes harder to stay at that level uh, because you have a bullseye on your back, you have, you're under a bigger, I guess you call it a bigger microscope, and there's much more scrutiny, criticism, praise, all that that you have to deal with. Steph had to first deal with being overlooked, attending small Davidson College when big universities offered no recruiting interest. NBA scouts then questioned his size and skill set prior to the 2009 draft before the struggling Golden State Warriors took him with the seventh pick. Are there days when you come in here and you're thinking, how did I get here? A hundred percent. There are times where I think back to when I was drafted and didn't know exactly the direction we were going. A losing team and to now where we're playing for championships and have a huge stage to play on every single night we step foot on the floor. So it is, it's an amazing journey and something I'm grateful of the entire journey to get here. Here is Oracle Arena home of the Warriors and hub for a rabid national and local fan base. For a Carolina kid, what makes the Bay Area a great place to play and to pour into? The Bay Area is just so culturally diverse and there's so many different people from back, different backgrounds. And it's obviously a beautiful landscape. You got obviously the Bay, you got San Francisco, Oakland. So there's just a lot of variety in a very small space. You can tell the people who live here love it and they receive uh, us on the, on the basketball floor so well. They support us. They're passionate fans and, and care about what's, what, you know, what the Warriors are up to. A team that's up to being the league's elite, with Steph's signature three-point shot resetting his own NBA record in each of the past three seasons. What for you is the most important component to your outside shooting? Consistency with your base and fundamentals. So you look at the greatest shooters in basketball history, not one person shoots like another person. Uh, they all have a, a very unique form, but you know they're the ones that can repeat that form over and over and over again with little little change each time so that they are a more accurate shooter when, they, when it's pressure time or when they're open, not open, whatever. On your release, what are you looking at? Where's your focus? It's on the rim as I'm shooting. After I shoot, when the ball is halfway up towards the rim, I kind of stare at the ball just to see how it's rotating, see what line it's on. You usually know at that point whether you're going to make it or miss it. And then you lock back on the rim to hopefully see that ball go right through the net. His scoring skills are on a fast break of their own, quick enough to earn Steph a reputation as the NBA's greatest shooter ever. But of all the shots that the Billboard Wonder treasures, it's the sure shot that anchors his soul. I've learned well from my parents. They set a very, very high standard of who you are, what you believe, and how Jesus can work through you on a daily basis should be at the forefront, and that should be able to navigate you through whatever you know, life situation you're in, and to not be ashamed of that. His dad, Del Curry, played 16 NBA seasons. Growing up in a basketball family gave Steph a nurturing model shared among teammates. The brotherhood that is on this team runs deep, and we know there are a lot of guys that are similar in faith. How does the Christianity, the brotherhood among brothers, play into that? You ask anybody in their walk of faith, it's all about finding accountability partners and finding people that can encourage you in your walk. Knowing nobody's perfect, we all have very similar you know, temptation struggles through our entire walk of faith. So for us and on the court, you know, we all 
grind and compete on the floor, so why not grind and compete in our spiritual you know, walk together as well. The overlap for both player and person becomes intentional. We have a group chat called the Discipleship Group where we share Bible verses every single day and kind of do a Bible study through text message. You know, every game day we have 10, 11 guys you know, show up for, for the 30 minute Bible study and prayer service. Daily encouragement, that's the biggest thing. Steph shares encouragement from his platform donating chemically treated bed nets internationally by every three-pointer he makes with a nothing but nets campaign. How satisfying, Steph, is that for you to be able to impact lives a half a world away? It's definitely gratifying to know we're saving lives. Malaria is a devastating uh, disease, especially for kids under the age of five. And so families in Africa who are in you know malaria prevalent areas, those parents can't protect their young ones from a mosquito bite and the negative effects of malaria, you know, without our help and without these nets. And this isn't uh, an issue that we can eradicate. It's something that's preventable. And we're, we're on that mission. Steph Curry, the basketball shotsmith, double dribbles his discipleship into the game he plays and into the lives he influences outside of it. That's the hardest part of how crazy society is and the pace of our life right now. You have to be able to continue to get fed every single day because there are distractions left and right. Find ways to impact people with how you walk, whether you say anything or not, that they can see something that's, that's different about you and how you carry yourself, and well, that's a follower of Jesus. Steph Curry, always fun to watch him play and shoot. Terry, I can't believe I'm old enough now that I can say, I remember watching yeah. his father shoot three-pointers. Yeah. His father was a great shooter as well. Yeah. And uh, interestingly, the longtime chaplain of the Golden State Warriors, Earl Smith, is also the longtime chaplain at San Quentin Prison. Oh. And he's had a tremendous influence on Steph. Um, uh, and, Steph uh, and probably many others. Yeah, a lot yeah. behind the scenes. That's there. awesome. Well, I, I love what, what he's saying played into everything we talked about initially. Mm -hmm. You know, let your life be a witness, whether you ever say anything mm -hmm. or not. You know, let your little light shine. And you even commented during the piece about how quickly, you know, the ball gets to him. It's just, it's uh, instinct, instinct now, the he way he shoots. Even... And it, just watching that, even in our Christian walk, you yeah. know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit, when we're adhering to the Holy Spirit, it gives us wisdom yeah. quickly. And, and uh, when we're adhering to what God commands us, the walk can be easier. Yeah, it's your natural mm -hmm. response. Great to watch him yeah. play, he's really inspiring. Well, up next, her humble job didn't pay enough to give her children a home. Find out why Valentina is thanking God and CBN partners like you. Don't go away, we'll show you why. We may take a warm place to sleep for granted, but for one family in Ukraine, it was an answer to prayer. When her husband was sent to prison, Valentina had no way to provide for her children. So she got a job as a street sweeper. I was crying all the time because I didn't have a place where I could live with my kids. It was such a disaster. They couldn't afford rent, so most nights they wound up in dilapidated shacks sleeping on the cold ground. But Valentina never lost hope and encouraged her children to pray. I always knew that God doesn't abandon those who love Him. When Orphan's Promise learned about Valentina and her children, we knew the kids were in danger of winding up in an orphanage. So we bought the family a home of their own. I couldn't believe that this is actually my home. Now I know that when I come from work, nobody can send me and my children outside. And this is the family's first home with running water. I used to carry water across the street before. In the winter, it happened sometimes that it got freezing. Now I can bathe my children, wash, clean in the house. The kids are grateful for their home and do their best to help keep it clean. And they're learning to read and write at a Christian youth center we support. I'm very happy. I'm very grateful to God that I have everything now. And thank you for your kindness. I want to add my thanks to that if you're a 700 Club member because you're breaking the cycle of poverty in the lives of these children. As they become educated, they'll begin to dream and then they grow up to become different than the family before them. They've got a grandma who's just come and filled in the gap for them in this little family's scenario. But can you imagine being a grandmother? I want to tell you, in the winter in Ukraine, it is cold and she has had to move from family to family 
not relatives, just people who see their need and take her and her grandchildren in. And people keep them for a while and then they're back out on the street again. But not anymore, thanks to your generosity, 700 Club members. Listen, I want to say if you haven't joined the 700 Club, you're missing out on a great opportunity because together, when we unite with our giving, we can make a difference in the lives of people who are in need. And don't think that doesn't send a message to the world about the Savior that we serve. God allows us to be a part of what He's doing in the lives of other people. So don't miss out on that. How do you join the 700 Club? It's awesome. You call a toll-free number, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month. You can also do it online by logging on to 700clubinteractive.com. We say thank you in advance. And another way we say thank you is to send you the Secret Kingdom DVD. This is Pat Robertson sharing with you all the principles of the Secret Kingdom, his national bestseller, and then Gordon's teaching on the law of expectation. We want you to have this. It'll bless you in your walk. At the same time, you will be touching and changing lives all around the world. So go to your phone right now. Andrew? Well, thank you, Terry. Coming up, his father was in surgery battling for his life. The doctors come in and they told me, be prepared. This isn't good. We don't know if we can save him. I thought I was in a nightmare. Don't miss the miracle that ended the nightmare. That's next. Plus, we're going to be praying for you. Don't go away. Franklin Bradford's doctor refers to him as the man with nine lives. That's because Franklin came so close to death multiple times. At his lowest point, his son was praying desperately for his healing. And that's when a voice told him exactly where to turn for help. October 15, 2014. Franklin Bradford checked himself into an emergency room. I was feeling intense pain in my abdomen area. Once they got me back there, I had to have a bowel movement and it was all blood. Then it was like, there's a major problem. Within minutes, Franklin was in critical condition and transferred to Raleigh General Hospital in Beckley, West Virginia. By the time they got me out of the ambulance and was getting ready to take me in the door, from there I don't remember anything. In the ICU, doctors worked to locate the source of the bleeding, but the blood thinners Franklin had been taking for hypertension were frustrating their efforts. Franklin's son, Adam, was there. They were gonna come up with a treatment to try to thicken his blood. It wasn't working, though. Over the next few days, Franklin continued to have episodes of passing blood. All doctors could do was replenish what he lost and wait for the blood thinners to wear off. The doctors come in and they told me, be prepared, this isn't good. We don't know if we can save him. I thought I was in a nightmare. I mean, it was a nightmare. And uh, I just, I mean, I felt that he just wasn't going to make it. Family members started getting the information out. Then all of a sudden churches were praying, different areas were praying. One day, Adam went to the chapel to pray. He was trying to recall a Bible verse he wanted to pray for his dad. Then he noticed a Bible sitting on the table. All of a sudden this voice resonated on the inside of me and said, it's in Ezekiel 16. And I picked it up, opened it up, there it was. When I seen you lying polluted in your blood, I said unto you, live. I'm like, this has to be real. This has to be God. Adam returned to the ICU and prayed the scripture over his dad. Later, he had drifted off to sleep when his father's voice woke him up. I'm sitting there and all of a sudden he starts talking. He started saying, yes, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing right now. And my dad concluded saying, yes, Lord, this will be for your testimony, for your greatness. And then he went unresponsive again. I knew, I knew deep down inside that, that this was going to be okay. The next morning, Adam discovered Franklin was hemorrhaging massive amounts of blood. And this time, it wasn't stopping. 
Dr. Brian White was the surgeon called in. This guy was literally dying in front of our eyes and we had to do something to save his life. And the only other thing left was a surgical intervention. They're like, if, if not, he's, he's dead. And more than likely, he's gonna die on the operating table, but at least it's a chance that we'd like to take if you'd agree to it. And I'm like, yep, you operate. We got to the operating room, opened up his stomach. It was a huge ulcer. There was a blood vessel in the middle of it just pumping blood. After four hours of surgery, Dr. White and the team removed the ulcer and repaired the open blood vessel. But there was still a problem. He kept bleeding. They're like, he's still oozing blood. We can't get it to stop. His blood was still thin because of the medication he was taking. So that had to really get out of his system so he could be okay. Franklin was put on blood thickening agents and frozen plasma to get his blood to clot. Over the next two weeks, Adam and others watched and prayed. It started working. The bleeding started to slow down. The doctors started saying, I think he's going to make it. I think he's going to pull through. That was some of the greatest news that you could ever have. The first thing that I could remember is Dr. White came walking in the door and he said, there's the man with the nine lives. After weeks of treatment and rehab, Franklin fully recovered. It's a miracle, yes. He's lucky to be alive. I didn't expect him to survive that one. <laughs> he did. Jesus Christ is awesome. He told me that if, if I trust in him, he would take care of me. And he did. And he does. And he is. There's nothing impossible for the Lord. Prayer works. He listens. He listens to your prayers. Keep praying. Well, if you're like Terry and I, after seeing that story, you are ready to pray and bring your concerns to our Heavenly Father who cares so much. In that story, we saw a son who went to the throne room of God on behalf of his father. And we want to go to God on behalf of you and your concerns now. In fact, Terry, we have people mm -hmm. who have written us about ones they care about for we prayer. We do. This first one comes from Georgia who says, Please pray for my granddaughter Phoebe to know the love of her father since she has never known the love of an earthly father. And then Tawana writes, My brother's having surgery for his cancer. Please pray for him and his sweet wife. This from Sherry. I wonder what I have to wake up for. All I have left is walls and limits. I try, but I'm really tired. Please pray for me. And Frankie says, Praying for record reconciliation with my son and restoration and healing in my family. So let's all pray together. There's power in that. Lord, we pray for Georgia specifically, for her granddaughter, Phoebe. God, you are a good, good father. Would you fill the hole in Phoebe's heart and life? And would you teach her to trust you and to love you and to fall into the arms of your love, God, where she'll never be let go? Pray for Tawana, for her brother who's having surgery for his cancer. God, we ask you to do a miracle for him, just as you did in this last story that we saw. What, what the enemy is meant for evil, we ask you to work for good, and we pray for his wife, for strength and for hope and for energy during this time, Lord Jesus. Father, we read Sherry's request, who says, mm -hmm. I wonder what I have to wake up for. Jesus. Here is a woman without hope. And that breaks our heart, Father God. And so many are without hope. So many right now have fear and anxiety mm -hmm. and are hopeless and discouraged. Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now, Terry and I come to you on behalf of them. We pray your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will intercede and give joy. And the companionship of your Holy Spirit will raise them up in the name of Jesus. We pray for hope, Father God. We pray for a renewing of the mind, Lord God. Pour out your love afresh mm -hmm. on them. I pray for sweet time with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you tell us we do not have a spirit of fear. You've given us power, love, and a sound mind. And Father God, for Frankie, who wants reconciliation in his family. So many families torn apart, Lord God. You are the great reconciler, God. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile humanity to you. We know reconciliation is so important because you have done it, Father God. And we pray for families now who need reconciliation. Show each of us what we need to do in order to bring that about, Father God. And give us an attitude of Christ toward those who have hurt us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Father, we ask all of this in your holy name. You are good all the time, and we worship you today with gratitude in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. We leave you with this word from Philippians 3, verse 7, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And we wanna thank you for being with us today. If you need prayer, call 800-700-7000. And until next time, for Terry Muse and I'm Andrew Knox, and we will see you tomorrow on 700 Club Interactive.